okay guys so today we are going to discuss about uh, dynamic web table handling okay now this is not any concept believe me this is just a way of doing something okay so see in simple words let me tell you what is mean by dynamic web tables so usually you may say you may see or uh, you may encounter a situation where you can uh, have a web table in front of you and in that web table we have certain values inside that table okay now uh, you will be asked to write a test case on that particular table now let me tell you that what is the difference between dynamic web table and static web table so static web tables are such kind of web tables where the content of tables are not going to change okay the contents of web table will remain same but what is a dynamic web table so dynamic web tables are simply tables which contain may get changed okay each and every time you are refreshing let's take an example of the cricket score okay so whatever live cricket score you are seeing on your screen are the web tables okay inside that web table you can see the name of batsman the run he is scoring and uh, maybe can you please mute your microphone okay so ultimately uh, what we are going to see over here is we have a web table where we can see a name of batsman is appearing then run he runs he is scoring uh, and then who is the bowler who is bowling and uh, the balls he has faced and so on so these many statistics you can see under one web table where the things are continuously changing okay we, runs will not remain same okay so for for yeah actually i am not able to see the screen only testing surface that is the one i am opening right now so that is why you are not able to see okay so uh, these are the dynamic web tables where the contents are usually changing uh, whenever you refresh the page or maybe something else some activity you are doing on the web page based on those activities the entire you know uh, table is changing uh, so i have this example over here uh, with me that is bseindia.com this is the website that i'm taking for today's example so can you see over here this is the table okay this is a table over here and this table has certain things over here like security code security and then price and then percentage ltq i don't know this about this factors i just have uh, gone through some um, random web tables and i found that this one is the suitable one so ltq and buy and sell and buy sell quantity and everything these are the things that we are seeing over here okay now can you see over here we have so many details in here right but let's say that tomorrow you are opening the same website okay and there may be a situation where you cannot find this asian paint at the second position okay you may find the asian paint at maybe third position maybe fourth position or maybe at the last position depending on its status so whatever the status of this stock is there okay so uh, this entries are going to change okay uh, each and every time so this may happen or maybe day wise or maybe hourly if you look at the i'm not the very you know trading kind of guy i don't invest money in trading because i don't know about them but i'm just taking an example uh, just to let you know people that what will happen is these entries may going may change okay so let's say it, it is asian paint is in the second uh, row today tomorrow it may happen that asian paint will become at first or maybe third or maybe fourth or maybe something else so ultimately in such situations if you run the same test case tomorrow your test case will get failed why because you have written a x path which is stating that find asian paint on the second row but next day asian paint is moving to the third row or maybe some else row so in that case in such situation your x path will become useless to you why because your x path is not able to find the asian paint in that particular row in the next day why because the value has been changed so these are the dynamic web tables and believe me they are nightmare for the 
automation testers while writing the XPath for them. So most of people doesn't understand that how to tackle this kind of situations. So usually these things are called as handling dynamic web tables. So interviewer may ask you at some point of time that have you handled dynamic web tables ever. So before starting up handling the dynamic web table, we will understand the entire structure of the table. Okay, HTML table or web table, whatever is you call it as. So let me give the heading handling dynamic web tables. Okay, easy. So uh, let us have a look over here and then, okay. Okay, so before starting to handle the dynamic web tables, we should understand what are the tables first, okay? So we have a table tag over here in the HTML. Inside this table tag, we have the entire table, okay? So mostly the format of table tag is like this, okay? Uh, T body tag is there, maybe there, it is optional. Okay, so you, if you want to write, you can write. If you don't want to write, you can not, okay? T body tag is here and then T body is closing. Okay. So simply. Okay. Inside the, this T body, we may have table row tag. Okay. Which tag? Table row tag. So for one row, one table row tag is there. Okay. And inside this table row tag, we may have multiple table data tags okay multiple table data tags so that that is this is what we are going to have okay inside table row tag we may have multiple table row tags sorry table data tags table data and then one more table data maybe so obviously we are going to close them, okay? Just here, slash TD and here again, slash TD, here again, slash TD. And this may have some maybe serial number, okay? Or maybe student name, and then maybe roll number, roll number. So this is the first row that we have defined. So we are going to close this row by closing this tr tag so we are done with the first row can you see over here this is the first row that we have created okay and this row is having three columns so this table data are nothing but the cell contents okay so if you look at any table you will find that they are comprises of rows and columns so whatever columns are there we are mentioning them by using the td tag so td means table data okay table data and tr means table row okay then we may have one more table row tag over here uh, and we are starting with this one so obviously you can uh, put the attributes if you want if your project is permitting you so you can give the attributes to this td tags also let's say maybe first student whatever uh, attribute you want to give you, you can give so first serial number is one maybe and then we are going to close this td tag and then again we may have one more td tag okay and its value may be student name okay so i'm writing my name avinash and then td tag is closing and then one more td tag let's say we have okay and roll number is maybe a100 so this is how your table should look like Dy uh, not a dynamic this one is the static one okay so we are going to close this table row so can you see we have created two rows over here first row and second row these are the two rows that we have created under this table tag so can you see over here this is the structure so you can observe over here that table is the parent t body is the child tr is the child and trs tr is having three children over here this TR is having two more children over here and so on. Okay. Entering information in table. Okay. So we have these many uh, ro uh, rows over here. Now our table is having two rows only. Okay. Where first row is specifying the name of columns. 
okay and then second row from second row we are starting uh, start putting data okay so actual data is st uh, uh, started from the table row number two okay so if you look at the hierarchy we have talked about the indexes of the um, tags okay html tags where this is the first tr okay uh, inside t body and this is the second tr inside t body okay so we can identify them by their indexes also but it is recommended to not go with the indexes because they are the dynamic web tables and they may get changed so we are not we should not go with the um, indexes of the html tags so ultimately we are going to have a look at a look at the structure of this table what what kind of structure this table is having so let us right click on this and inspect and can you see over here so this is the table tag over here can you see this is the table tag and can you see the entire table is highlighted when i'm uh, moving my cursor upon that particular table tag so entire table is get highlighted can you see see over here end to end table is been highlighted okay so our requirement is let's say i want to check the price of asian paint okay i want to check price of asian paint so for that i need to write a dynamic uh, web table handling kind of scenario so believe me this is not a concept let me tell you this is not a concept handling dynamic web table it is just a technique that we are studying okay so there is no method required for that there is nothing required just a programming log logic is required over here so here the knowledge of java will help us and uh, will help us to get out of this problem okay so let's see how we can do this do that let's say that i am writing an x path like this maybe this is the td tag which is having asian paint can you see this is the td tag which is having anchor link tag inside it and this anchor link tag is having the text asian paint so if i write td tag which has child as a and which contains text text what kind of text asian maybe asian can you see one one element is highlighted and we are at the element that we want okay now what is our requirement observe over here okay so we want a price of asian paint so we don't want an asian paint we want a price of asian paint now you should know that in which table row the asian paint is okay at what number of uh, row asian paint is there okay at the second row asian paint is there so can you see over here the structure this is one tr 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 can you see the tr table rows are getting highlighted okay and these many trs are over here and each tr is having a data symbol which is a unique value okay can you see so just observation is required over here so can you see over here our asian paint is in tr2 now okay but tomorrow this may be a case that asian paint will move in inside this tr or maybe inside this tr or maybe inside this tr anywhere it can go so what is my requirement is to traverse through all the tr tags and search where asian paint is okay did you get this but this table row let's say the first table row which has been highlighted over here this table row is having different td tags okay let us see how many td tags this table row is having first table row okay so let us count down the columns one two can you see over here one two three four five six seven eight and nine so nine td tags should be there inside this uh, td tag that we have so can you see over here this is the first td tag then second td tag that we have and then next td tag is there can you see one two three okay and then four and then five six seven eight and nine so nine td tags we have okay but uh, what number of td tag we are interested in it is the one two and three because we are interested in price so we are interested in in the third td tag 
okay so this is not going to change we are interested in third td tag we are interested in second in td tag so we are going to traverse through the rows only whereas table data will remain constant okay where uh, uh, understand this very clearly what i'm trying to say asian paint this name will remain in this column only okay in this column only only row is going to change one row maybe two second row maybe third row maybe fourth row okay but column is going to remain same here also in price column will remain same okay in this example okay but your example may have different scenario but this example price is the third column okay where column means td okay so third td and second td we are interested in so we will search the second td whose text is asian paint and then we will move to the third td from where we will get this price okay so for this we need a programming so if you think in the background uh, you should create some uh, english statement and that english statement we have to convert into our program so what i will do first of all what should be the requirement this asian paint can be anywhere in this table okay can at at, at can uh, the asian paint value can be at any point in this table so how we are going to observe this that the value in this column is the asian paint so i have to check right from the first value to till the last value okay right from the first value till the last value i have to check whether the value is asian paint value is asian paint or not if the value is not asian paint then i am going to jump on the next row okay if the value is asian paint then i am going to jump on the third table data are you getting this so this is the simple english statement or maybe paragraph you can write and that paragraph you have to convert into the programming so first requirement is to get all these all these names okay so i have to get all these names first okay now we have seen that if i want to take a text of one wave element then what what can i write what is the what is the thing that i can use get text is the method that we have okay get text is the method of wave element interface okay using this method we can get the text of wave element okay but uh when we write driver dot find element and then by dot xpath whatever xpath we are writing over here this is going to give only one element to us okay but what we want is number of web elements okay so more than one web elements we want so we have already seen a method and its name is find elements okay observe the difference by dot again xpath so whatever xpath we write so this is the method that we have studied and what is the purpose of this method let me zoom in okay what is the purpose of this method so purpose of this method is to get number of wave elements so what we want is the entire table row or maybe entire column that we want okay entire column is what we require now we will use this find elements method and obviously we are going to check whether the required value is there or not and then we will apply some programming logic out of that so let us try writing a program for that so it may take a time today's session may get longer okay so let me create a java project over here and maybe dynamic web table okay dynamic web table and the project is created simple java project i have created over here so let me add the selenium jar to this project okay over here we have selenium jar
Okay, this is the jar that we have and we are going to add this to our project. Okay, and then we're going to copy this Chrome driver from here. So let me move it up here. Okay, we are good to go. Now let us create a class, simple class web table handling okay now let me create a main method over here i'm re directly writing the main method okay so i'm not making it a modular just for the sake of example okay okay let me zoom in okay Okay, so let us create a web driver instance. Web driver driver is equals to new Chrome driver. Okay, but before that we have to set the path of driver is executable. So import them and system dot. set property we have to set the property of the chrome driver web driver dot chrome dot driver and then chrome driver that's it we are good to go this will open the chrome browser now we want to put the in url of that application that we want to test so this is the get method that we have and inside this get method we're going to put this url so copy this url and go here in the eclipse and put this url yep we are good to go okay now url will be opened now what is our requirement is to read this entire column okay this entire column we are interested in so i want the values all the values inside this column okay all of the values inside this column so how i'm going to do that so click on inspect okay can you see over here okay now let us observe it very clearly and let us see what we can get and what we cannot get okay so uh, if you if we observe over here then we will find that uh, we have let me click on this particular value so i'll yeah so we have these many tr tags over here so um, the one thing i can do is i can get the entire tr tags available inside this t body tag okay so whatever table rows i'll get i'll get inside i'll get the entire table inside some structure okay so we have seen that find elements method is there which will return list of web elements to us okay list of web elements to us so it will become a kind of two dimensional array thing in the list okay two dimensional array and that we have studied so far studied so far so here um let us think that what we can do uh, we should take the uh, all table row tags or maybe we can jump on some table data that is the second table data of every tr tag so what what we can do so if i go for the tr tag and table data tag of every second so let us try doing that Control f and then let me write the xpath for this that is i t body okay t body at the right id is equals to this okay it is highlighting the table perfectly okay now we want uh, slash tr and then slash td2 okay so it will highlight it is highlighting 31 elements over here so can you see this is the first element that we have okay and let's jump on the next element can you see asian paint is highlighted next axis bank is highlighted bajaj auto is highlighted can you see 
only uh, these company names are getting highlighted and that is what we require okay this is the xpath let us copy this xpath and here in the program let us write list um, and we will give the name equivalent to the column name so security is the name of column so i'll give the name here security is equals to maybe security list we'll say okay security list is equals to driver dot find element and then by dot find elements by dot x path okay and what is the x path expression that we have calculated this is the x path expression okay so let me copy that once again Yes, done. So we got each and every uh, element from here. Okay, so we have to import the java.utils list, not awt, okay? Okay, good. Now we have the entire web elements, okay? Entire column inside this list, entire column. Which column? Security column. So entire column we have in our list and the list, name of the list is security list now i can restrict uh, the type of the this list also how i can restrict okay so we have seen the java generic so i'll make it as web element remember we cannot make it a string why because find elements method written type is web elements list of web elements okay can you see over here let us just quickly jump on the find elements method so this is the declaration of the find elements method and this this method belongs to the web driver class oh sorry interface and can you see over here its written type is list of web elements only means it is returning the generic list and the type of list is web element so all of the elements inside this list will be instances of the web element okay pretty straightforward and easy okay but what we want is text okay but uh, what we want is text now we know that web elements text how to get the web elements text by using the get text method by using the get text method so i will apply the iterator over here i will apply iterator over here because i have to iterate through entire list that i got okay iterate Okay, I have to traverse through the entire list. So to traverse through the entire list, I need to loop through. Okay, now how can I loop through? By using the iterator that we already have seen while studying the collection. Okay, so this is how we have applied the iterator. Now let's apply the while loop. Okay, inside this while loop, let me just quickly apply this on collection. Okay, so iterator has next and then can you see the web elements, uh, sorry, the elements, th those are present in the security list are of type web elements, okay? So what we need to do is we simply, we should simply write itr.next. This will give us, give us the web element. If you, if we write, um, okay, they are coming out as an object. So what we need to do is web element element is equals to itr.next and let us type cast it to the web element. Web element that's done. Okay, now let us type element dot get text. Okay and let us try to print them so that we will have an idea that we are going good or not okay so sorry okay and let us print them uh, so i should call this method from print in itself element dot get text that's it done so let us execute this program and, and observe the output that what we are getting so far
so believe me web the handling dynamic web table is not at all a topic or maybe concept but it is just a technique of doing something so a little programming is required over here so if you have a very hands on practice on the java then only you can understand what i'm trying to say over here okay the browser is opening chrome executable is started executing and it have been worked the browser now the url has been injected and yes the program is done let us see over here it is still trying to print something okay so it is loading i guess the pages are going to load I guess program is done. So let me print the size. Let, let us see that how many elements are there. Number of elements plus security list dot size. Okay, let us execute this one more time. Okay, the browser is opened and the URL has been dropped. Number of elements are coming zero. I don't know why. So let us try to write this X path one more time and let's see whether it is changing. Oh, there are 31 elements it is highlighting, but it is not getting all the elements which are highlighted. I wonder why. So let us try checking that what is happening. Find elements. Let us try to get all the TR tags of out of them. So we should not execute this code. Okay, the program is executed and still it is giving number of elements as zero. I wonder why. So it is weird. We have to check what is happening to our program. So why is it giving the size as zero? Why there are no elements in this list? So let us try to debug, try debugging this program so that we'll have a concrete idea about it. So I'm going to apply a debug point over here and you will understand that how debugging works, okay? So apply a debugging point where you want to stop yourself and maybe, yeah. And then let's, let me close this browser. Okay, and then debug as Java application. Yes, click on yes. Oh, 
Okay, here we can see that uh, we have to press F6 to traverse onto the onto the uh, next step. Okay, so simply hit the F6 key. So keep pressing because So what is happening? The page is opened and here the security li list. What are the contents of the security list? We are on this line. Yes, we've moved ahead. And let us check that what this security list is having. So can you see there are no elements in here? The security list is coming empty. Uh, so it is not giving any element to us in return. So what can I do? So let us try finding all TR tags, maybe. Okay, whatever TR tags we have. Let us try having them. So let us change the perspective to the Java browsing. Okay guys, so the problem was this table is inside an iframe and that is why we were not getting the exact count. Okay, so how we figured that out. So we have uh, switched on this frame first. Okay, and that there was an iframe in between. So we have to switch in onto the iframe. So don't worry about this. We are going to cover this topic in coming lectures. So this is how we have shifted on the iframe first and then we got the number of TD, that is what we require, second TDs, okay? So let us run this program once again and let us see that how many TD tags we are going to get. Okay, so I'm executing this program. Yeah, the program is executed and the pro table is loaded. And here, can you see 31 table data tags we got over here? And that is what we require. Because if you count these, these entries, how many entries are there in this table? Okay, can you see over here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you count, count them, they are 31. So this is what we got from here. And let us try to print what we got, okay? So let us apply the iterator once again. Let us uncomment this code. Okay, in short, that's it. And let us try to execute the program once again. Page is loading and it must be printing something and it is closing. Can you see over here? All of the security column contents have been printed over here. Can you see? Adani, Ports, and an Asian Paint, Access Bank, Bajaj Auto. So whatever entries are there inside this column, all of the entries have been printed up. Now what is our requirement? Our requirement is to jump onto uh, the price relevant to the Asian Paint. So we have to apply some logic over here. Okay, so let us see what kind of logic we can apply over here. So in short, I have to iterate uh, till I get the desired value. So I will apply the if statement over here. If element dot get text, okay, get text. 
dot equals okay dot equals and what is the desired text width that we want so let us copy this one asian paint okay asian paint you should write it exactly down okay or maybe you can invoke this method equals ignore case where cases will not be matter okay that's all if this is matching up then in the same row in the same row we are going to jump on the third table data tag and for that we are going to write once again driver dot find element by dot xpath and xpath expression will be like this command c command v here i'm going to change the cell number that is column number to three okay and then get text dot get text because we want the text we want the price to be printed so let us call this method inside uh, sys out okay So let me write a good message over here at the start. And the message is price of Asian paint is, yes. okay? And after this if statement, we are going to break our while loop. Why? Because we, know we don't want to check the entire table once we get our value. Why? Because we get the value at this point and there is no point in executing the loop further so i'm going to break this entire loop over here and let us execute this program fingers crossed and it should give the price that is 1340.05 oh but it is giving 368.98 can you see over here the price is printed but the wrong price is printed why the wrong price is printed okay let us have a look at it 368 can you see over here 368 and why it is giving up for that okay and not for the asian paint so what we are going to check over here is if element dot get text uh, equals ignore case Asian paint equals maybe no no equals ignore case is required because we are not going to check for the case okay then we are going to print this and we are going to break else we should write continue or maybe something like that else continue So it will continue because it have breaked itself on the fir very first uh, statement itself on the Adani ports. So it should not stop at that point and it should keep it trading the second TD. Okay, so let us see. Oh, I got the problem. We are not iterating the table row. That is why it is giving the first value only. Can you see over here how we can return the program? How we have written the program? Here, I'm writing this XPath where this table row is not updated at all. So I have to get the updated table row. So how I can write my XPath for that, okay? So observe from here that here we are getting table data tags, okay? Here we are getting table data tags. This table row are getting updated automatically and we are not getting the updated value of it. So what we need to do is how we can handle this scenario. Did you understood what I'm trying to say? That this TR tag is not getting updated. This is the first ever TR tag which is being picked up every time. Okay, but this is not our case. What is our case? We want a TR tag which is updated. So let us see let us say that um, if uh, asian paint is not matching up we, we are going to take some variable over here let's say int row num 
is equals to initially it is a zero okay or maybe it is one initially okay so if this this content is not matching up we are going to we are going to increment this row num okay we are going to increment this row num so this row num will become two and three and so on so and this is the adjustment that we are going to do over here okay now we want the third tag or maybe second tag or maybe third row or maybe second row or maybe fourth row any number of row can be there okay so how we are going to write for that okay so just concatenate the row number over here okay so how we are doing this just observe it if you don't understand please ask me so what we need is row num row num this is how we can make our xpaths dynamic xpaths okay they're more dynamic not no no static now now this row number will get updated each and every time it, it will try to jump on that particular row whatever the value of row num will be so let us execute this program yep we are done can you see over here one three four zero point zero five this is the value that we got that's it that's it about the handling dynamic web tables so let me uh, just quickly zoom that out so that you can see the entire program how i have written it so guys believe me this may be a nightmare for people who are not practicing enough so you have to practice to understand everything and as i said that this was not a tried and tested assignment so that is why it took long time maybe okay so this is the assignment that we got okay now if you look at this table tomorrow that uh, at that point you may feel that this asian paint is on the third line or maybe on the fourth line so on any line it may be okay on any line it this asian paint may be your program will not get failed so this program will not get failed unless and until the columns are changing why because we are hard coding the columns can you see table data that is what we are hard coding okay but we are not hard coding the table row row numbers so row numbers are starting from the one not like java they are not starting from the zero over here so they will always start from the one and they will keep on iterating so this is how you can handle the dynamic web tables now it is not a case that even if your asian paint is going to change on the next row or maybe on the next row or maybe fifth row or maybe seventh row or maybe any number of row so uh, no no matter where your asian paint may be okay now this program will for sure get that asian paint and the price print the price of that particular asian paint so this may be your test case or this may be a scenario for your interview so this is all about handling dynamic web table and here we haven't used any technique it is just a way of doing the things okay it is not a concept okay it is not a concept why because you can see i just have written the x path i just have created the x path which is dynamic where the row numbers are changing the same logic you can up put over here can you see here the row number is uh, column number is 3 i can make it a dynamic as well so that is what we can do so i request everybody to repeat this assignment whenever you get time and practices practice, practice it as much as you can and you can uh, imagine any number of scenario in this table and you can start coding so this is how you need to practice so do you have any questions on this